Oh, I'm live. Hey, oh my gosh, I had technical difficulties. I, um, let me get this switch. I could not get the webcam up on my computer. So I hope people can hear me. And I don't get, let's see, chat. I'm sorry, I'm kind of, all right. Here we go. I think. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yeah, this is, let's see here. I'm going to get my, let me get my YouTube up here so I can make sure I see questions. All right. I think I got it. Yeah, just as I was doing that, my friend called me. She passed her exam. So. I am super stoked about that. So let's see if I can watch this. I really want to watch it on my own. Okay. Um, all right. Hope, uh, there we go. All right. Would it be better to buy a house with a pool, with a backyard, or build one? Well, that's a good question. Let's see here. Um, I'm going to try to bring this up, make sure I can see it. See, so, ah, okay, good. Um, so it depends on what your budget is. If it's going to be a good idea, you, um, you have to find a lot that's got enough of a backyard for you to put the pool in. Pools cost about a hundred thousand, hundred twenty-five thousand, and um. So 100, 125,000, then you're probably looking at a home of a minimum of 500,000. So, you know, if you can find a home with a pool, that's probably a good idea because they do take six months to a year. And um, remember to go, okay. I'm sorry, I'm like watching three things at the same time here just to make sure that I see everything. Ooh. Yeah, I don't want to turn my head down. Look good. I'm watching this on the other screen there. Um, okay. So I got lights, everything set up. Um, <clears throat> a lot of the homes here, I mean, I don't, again, I don't know what your budget is. If you have a budget of about 800,000, um, then you might be able to find a really nice one with a pool. Although I do have a listing that has a home with a pool and it is, under 500,000, it's 479,000. Okay, um, I'm on. No, no, people are texting me because they can't see me. Um, that was at 707. All right, I know this is, have you started? My screen says live in two minutes. People are waiting now. I'm live. There's a time, there's a little bit of a delay. I did notice that because I can see that in my other screen. There you go. Yeah, you can see me now. Um, <clears throat> yeah, just as I was going, I was testing it earlier, and then I could not get the camera and the speaker on my computer. So I, I was trying to do it on my phone, and my phone's running out of battery. <laughs> so I had to get my laptop up, and I may have to jump and get the <laughs> power cable um, together. So we were talking about a home with a pool. Should you build one? You got to find the right piece of property and you have to find, you have to have enough money. And again, I was talking about my um, listing that I have that's uh, $479,000 up in the Marion County section on Cuthbert. It does have a pool. I do have a video of that. If you're interested, make me an offer. They can't refuse. Okay. Uh, oh, let's see. Thank you, Chief, for joining us on the treadmill. We appreciate that. And I do want to say we're all sorry to hear about your dog. He was such a cute dog and nice dog. So rest in peace, Gridley. Um, all right. So we have uh, here property taxes and insurance are rapidly rising in Florida. Well, property taxes are going to change when you take ownership. And um, every county is going to be different. So when you look on a map, Sumter County has the least amount of taxes. Um, Sumter Wildwood is probably the next least expensive. And I do have a video on that. It's called the cheapest place to live in the villages. Um, 
Marion County, then Lake County, the historic district in, um, that's just Lady Lake, uh, Lake County, Fruitland Park, and then all the new stuff is going to be really high in taxes. Um, and again, here in Florida, we base taxes on the sell price of your home. And each county has an estimator where you can go and figure out your taxes. I do that for all my buyers. I'll go out and figure out your taxes. Um, you know what? I think I need... I gotta go. Sorry. I think that um, there's way too much headspace. There we go. <laughs> I feel like a big girl now. Okay. Um all right. I'm sorry, because people are texting and asking questions. Um, I did a video, The Cheapest Place to Live, on taxes. In oh, there are um, tax estimators on every website. And I'm going to have that. I'm redoing my website. We're rebranding everything. And there'll be a special page that will be devoted to just taxes in the villages. Um, Homeowner's insurance is all over the place. So if your home has an old roof, you're going to have a problem getting insurance. So I just had an instance with my seller. Um, the home was built in 2009 and they're actually having to put a roof on it uh, prior to closing. I estimate insurance at $1.25 to $1.50 a square foot. That's a good indicator for you on um, just about what, you can expect. Now, if the roof is kind of on the cusp, you might find carriers that won't take it until the roof is replaced. Um, there's still a lot of carriers. I'm going to give a plug to Frank Slaughter. They're a um, insurance broker out in town, out in Wildwood. And I've had clients who've had great success with them. They say they're very responsive. Um, I can't type anything in here in the bottom because Skip Smith, if you're watching, I'm not as sophisticated as you when it comes to the live broadcast. Um, but give Frank Slaughter a call if you're looking for insurance because they're a broker and they represent many different companies. So, um, um, they're probably a broker is probably one of your best options, but don't take the first no for an answer. And I didn't get to where I am because to me, no is kind of just like a bump in the road is definitely not a stop sign. So, um, definitely call different agencies, different brokers, different, what they call direct writers, like state farm, all state to get quotes. Um, all right. What do you think about Eastport? Will it make Sumter Landing in the North less desirable? It seems the further south you go, the better the amenities get. Well, Peter, so let me tell you, right now, Eastport is going to be fantastic in a couple of years. Right now, it's a big dust bowl down there. And um, I think that Esports going to be a completely different vibe because you have all of the people from Middleton that'll be there. So it's going to be cool. I think it'll be fun. There's going to be a little bit more youth there, um, but it's still a couple years out. It is. Uh, I was down there with a friend of mine who was looking um, in the area, like at a new house, and it was so dusty and it was so loud from that school. But it is definitely a long term project. And it is far away from everything right now. We are several years away from it being hustling and bustling. So just keep that in mind when you're making your uh, purchasing decision. Hey, Steve, Kylie, I'm going to see you in a couple weeks. I know I just emailed you. I don't know if you saw it, but I did email you. Um, uh, Peter wants the chief back on my show. We've got a lot of response from that. And he and I will do another video at some point in time. We've actually talked about doing one where we both discuss our opinions on the different areas. And we did talk about that in that episode we did in January, but, um, I've been really busy. I know he's busy with work and all that kind of stuff. So we will get back to that. Um, Let's see, how long does it realistically take to find your ideal neighborhood? I don't know. It's like shopping for a wedding dress. Sometimes it's the first dress you put on, but um, you have to do your research. And that question is from Cindy. Is it Cindy? Cindy G. So thank you for posting that question. Um, you really need to kind of 
figure out what it is you're looking for. You know, some people come down and they love the north because they love the trees, the, the homes are set back further in the property. There's more, you occupy more land. Um, and the further south you go, like I live down here south of 44 in DeSoto, and I'm telling you, there are million dollar homes that are right on top of the road and right on top of each other. Um, you're just paying for what's not in your backyard. And you've heard me say that before. But you you really have to have an idealistic conception of what it is you want. If you're an avid golfer, south of 44 might not be that great of an option because you're still far away from a lot of golf. Now, we're getting more amenities here, but everything with the villages takes time. The developer, they're amazing visionaries. And they think long term. Um, but sometimes when you watch their videos, it sounds like it's coming really close, but it's still off in the distance. But they have to do that. That's the only way to plan this huge of a community is to be a forward thinker. So um, if you're looking for a lot of amenities close by, the further south you go is probably not a good idea. So just think, do you like trees? No trees? Lots of pools? No pools? And you could almost have that decision kind of before you come down here. Here's another thing I'm putting on my website when we rebrand it. I know that, you know, I can, uh, you can search in different sections, north of 466, south of 44, but I'm going to break it down. It's going to take a while because it's a lot to do, but um, you're going to be able to click on a village and check to see what homes are available in that village. Yes, I know it's slick and I'm pretty sure my assistant Ryan's going to be the one doing all the drawing. But anyway, it's exciting what's going to happen with that website. So stay tuned for that. And that'll help you narrow down and kind of figure out what you're looking for. All right. Uh, Stephen Kylie Skip's a good guy. Yes, he is. Uh, Brenda, uh, what happened to Gridley? Um, yeah, Gridley passed away, unfortunately. He was an old dog. And um, yeah, you had to put him down the other day. So it's very, he's very sad dog but you know what um you should message him and and i know he's put some posts on facebook and on um on uh, youtube so i'm sure he'd love to hear your you know, the support I've, I've you know once in a while i see them come up in my feeds and stuff but um yeah so i'm sure he'd love to hear from you uh choose some your videos go all right do you promote long-term rentals from your clients i don't promote them per se. If someone wants me to list it, I can do that. I don't do property management. So what I mean by that is I don't find you the clients and, and run the background checks and check on the house. And if the hot water heater is broken, they call me. I don't do any of that. Um, but I do know if I have clients that buy homes for me and they're looking to rent them when people call or message me, of course, I recommend them first, but I send them directly to the homeowner. Um, I don't really deal with that. Uh, let's see. Um, what do we got? Uh, Gary, hi from Tallahassee. Um, Hey, Todd, I see you're from Bradford. Yes, I sold you a home and I still owe you a closing gift pizza. You're still on the pizza program and I haven't forgot about it and I want to come see your house. So we have to get together and do that. Um, Tammy Dunn, is it more expensive to buy during the winter? No, it isn't. This is a year round market. So you got to remember the villages is active adult community. It's not um mom, dad, and I can, I guess I can still say this. Okay. Mom, dad, brother, and sister who are living in the house and they got to get settled and ready for school. The villages is all about active adults. So we're a year round commodity. You can buy and sell homes all year round. It doesn't really make a difference. The price doesn't drop in the summer. Um, I've seen an increase in inventory. Now, um, <clears throat> Last summer, I sold three times the amount of homes that I sold the summer previously. So, you know, what contributed to that? Were there more homes on the market? Is it because my YouTube channel was a little bit more popular, getting more leads? I can't really say. I know this first quarter of the year has been phenomenal. So um, there is no specific time because we're not getting settled and getting children ready to go to school. So we're a year-round purchase. Um, uh, Brenda, you're afraid of all the kids that'll be in Eastport. 
Yeah, I think there'll be kids, but it might be good. You know, you get to see some youth <laughs> running around dancing, having a good time. But time will tell on that. They are going to have their own square. They're not square, but they have a shopping center where they're putting restaurants and whatever. So, um, you know, they may stay in that section, but, you know, they got to remember the outside economy really helps keep the town square vendors, restaurant owners, shops in business. Um, the, we need those dollars and we, they need those dollars, not we, they need those dollars in the summertime when the snowbirds are gone, the population is reduced to keep them afloat. Uh, let's see. I would love a mixed neighborhood, but I understand your concern. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Are there any resources that just show you villa villages? Well, um, I have to say in the MLS, the system is not, can accommodate a style, a particular style of model of home. The villages site does that because that's proprietary software. You have to remember the MLS is designed for people throughout the United States. So we can search price, size, location, but like room for a pool. You can search a pool home, but not room for a pool. We can't search courtyard villa. So, you know, you just, I say, if you're searching on my site or in the MLS, you just have to be a little patient and put your parameters in. And if homes come up that don't fit your criteria, then just delete them. Send them out into the right swipe, left swipe, whatever it is. Um, okay, let's see here. Does Ryan already know he'll be doing the drawing? Uh, no, I'm gonna tell Ryan that. But he needs work. He's great. He's a great team member. He's making lots of phone calls for me, gathering a lot of information. I have him watching webinars on how to use my back end system because as my business grows and people, I just heard from Katie, she passed her test. Yippee, Katie. So now Katie and I are gonna hit the road. She is gonna start working with me and she will probably be meeting some of you and helping your first round anyway of looking at homes. And I'm really excited about that. That's gonna take a lot of pressure off of me. I'm trying to build a team around me to better serve everyone that reaches out to me. I don't like missing clients. I don't like missing emails. I don't like missing phone calls, but unfortunately right now I'm a one arm paper hanger so I can do what I can do. And um, I'm really looking forward to bringing this group of people together. Um, let's see. Do you need two agents to purchase a VLS pre-owned home? No. If you are purchasing a VLS home, you only need the VLS person. Now, if you want my opinion or you if you know an MLS realtor and you trust them and you want them to go with you or to go look at the home, then you can hire them. You they We'll charge you a fee to do that. They can review the contracts. They can um, review the inspection reports, go for the inspection. They can do everything that we would do if you bought an MLS home for the VLS. It would just cost you a fee to hire us for that service. And I know that any, I, I don't know about any realtor. I can't say that. I know I would do that. Um, <clears throat> but if you strictly are looking at pre-owned home, only in the MLS, which I don't know why you would do that. You would definitely, you definitely do not want to shortchange yourself. You want to look on both sides because we all have different inventory. And I don't care what the VLS says, because I had a girl call me. She wanted to go into one of my listings with her buyer. And I told her no, because I'm sorry, you're not a realtor. You are not allowed in my home, my listing, unless I'm with you. Because I know, sweetheart, if I call you and say, can I take my client into your home? You're going to tell me no. So. VLS people, some realtors may give them the code. They're not getting the code from me. I'm telling you that right now. Um, I have to be with them and I have to write up the contract. They cannot write contracts up on MLS homes. I don't care what anybody says to you. They cannot. They do not have access to our forms. Conversely speaking, we cannot write up contracts on their homes. They won't accept them. They have their own form. Their forms are kind of a combination of all of our disclosures and everything all put into one. I hope I answered that and I didn't sound like I was getting angry. <laughs> um, all right. Let's see. Uh, love the info. I got a little time, but do you do 1031 exchange for property near Eastport? Uh, for when design lots will be. All right. So 
Uh, 1031 exchange. Yes, I've worked on uh, several 1031 exchanges for property near Eastport Town Square. Okay, so here's the problem with the 1031 exchange. Once you sell your earned contract of your home, you have 45 days to identify the new property and you have 180 days to close. So buying a new home in Eastport is not going to work. You would have to um, already have closed on your home because, you know, the new homes, even if it's a spec home, they won't take a home sale contingency. You have to actually have closed, have cash in hand. That's a whole other topic. If you want some information because an intermediary has to hold the money, you can never touch the money in a 1031 exchange. So, um, yeah, just think about that. You're not going to be able to do that with a new house. But call me. Um, here, let's see. I don't know. I, I'm sure you people all have seen my phone number. It's blasted all over the world. Oh, eight, three, eight. Ah, there's my phone number. <laughs> Call me or email me. And here's my email. It's robin at robincavallero.com. Oops. God, I feel like uh, I'm in typing class again. <laughs> All right. So there's my email address. You can email me as well. Um, are mobile homes available in the villages? Tina, yes. In the historic district, we have manufactured homes. And there are, they range from, I've seen them for just a little under two to the mid or high twos. So yes, we do. If you're interested in a manufactured home, call me. Anybody wants to buy or sell, call me because now I have extra help. Uh, it was my understanding that Eastport will not be age restricted. Is that correct? No. All anything that's the villages is considered over 55. Now, anyone can own a home here. You can't have children 19 and younger living with you. The villages has met their 80-20 charter. Um, so I don't, uh, to my knowledge, no, you still have to be, you still, it's still an over 55 community, even though it's down in Eastport. Uh, thank you, Noreen. I love being honest. Um, I, I know I have a lot of people come to me and thank me for that. And rest assured, if I'm taking you into home, I mean, I, I'll tell you this story. I was with, and I don't know if they're watching, but I was with a father, father and son. They were buying two homes here. And we went into a couple of homes and the father looked at me. He's like, why are you pointing out all the negative? And I said, because you can see all the rainbows and unicorns, okay? It's up to me to point out all the crap that you can't see because a month from now, I don't want you calling me. Why didn't you tell me that? Why didn't you show me that? So I cover my bases. If I think I see something that's questionable, I'm going to tell you about it because you need to know you're making a big purchase. You have still three years before looking into a house in the villages. That's okay, Gary. Keep watching YouTube. Like, subscribe, everybody. I don't know why YouTube puts so much emphasis on subscribing, but it really does help the algorithm pull my content out into the universe. Um, let's see here. Where am I? Thank you, everyone. Let's see. How much can you get for a rental January, February, March? Well, Emilio... Thank you for asking that question. It all depends on the home. So January, February, March, patio villa could be $3,200 a month. Um, you know, a designer home, it could be five, six, seven thousand $7,000. It all depends on the home, the location. The closer to the town squares you get, the rent is probably going to be a little bit more. Uh, I was thinking of Middleton is a, yes, Noreen, Middleton is, is, is a family development. So yes, they're all little kids over there or um, younger families. Well, actually, anybody could live there. Um, it's just that it is a family development. Uh, I thought they were building family. You know, I read somewhere that, um, oh, I remember you guys. Yes, I did sign your book. <laughs> um I remember I was watching Gold Wingna, and I tell you, if anybody wants to know overall what's going on in the villages and construction, you need to watch Gold Wingna. He, I watch him <laughs> sometimes, and I get a lot of information from him. But he showed some community somewhere over in Coleman, I think, that they started to build, but they didn't. And I wanted to. I was going up to where was I going? I was going to closing, and off a of micro racetrack road. Let me tell you something. They were building a huge development over there. It's kind of crazy. I don't know what to put in there. I got to find out about that. Um, 
All right, let's see. I think I got, let's see here, this is back. Uh, what do you think of the negatives percentage of housing prices? Is, is the negatives percentage? Um, so I think that right now we have a lot of homes on the market. If you watched my last video, um, I or I think it was the last two, I did show how many homes we have in the MLS that are pre-owned and how many homes we have pre-owned um, how many are pre-owned in the VLS and, um, the, um, you can see that the MLS has more, but definitely the inventory is picked up. So there are, there's a lot of choice and there's a lot of competition in that like 280 to 350 range or about two or 300 homes, maybe up to 400, I think it was, um, in that price range. So, um, you know, I have a listing that's 319,000 that's sitting. I have a home that was 950 and went in a week. So, you know, it's, it's, the prices are all over, but you are going to have a lot of competition in that lower, in that price range where I think you're going to be Steve. So um, when we meet in the 18th, we'll definitely come up with an aggressive strategy to get that home sold for you. All right. So let's see, you know what I want to, I'm going to, talk about because I explained it in the last video and I know everybody's watching and it's coming up all over the news this whole <clears throat> nar the lawsuit that happened um and this has been going on for a couple of years and I'm not gonna get into all the details about everything but I like cliff notes <laughs> so cliff note version is that the um there were a couple of sellers and a lawyer law firm got together, filed this class action lawsuit saying that there's price fixing and price steering, that realtors are steering buyers into homes based on the commission, which, you know, I'm sure there are probably a few people that did that, but I, I mean, personally, whatever you're going to pay me, you're going to pay me. That's fine. Um, <clears throat> but now what they're saying is this, and there's a lot of misinformation out there. But this, we cannot list in the MLS the commission. That's split. So the seller and the listing agent decide what the fee is, and they decide if they're going to offer compensation for the buyer's agent. We cannot advertise if the seller is offering that commission, what it is. I think they'll come out with a box that says, yes, they're offering compensation or concessions. It may could call concessions and they give you the price. I don't know. They need to work all of those details out and that'll come in um, July. That's when it's all going to happen. So they can't offer, they can't list it, but you still can offer it. If the seller's not offering compensation, then the buyer has to pay the commission or a fee, whatever you want to call it, to the realtor who's bringing them around and showing the homes. And listen, I'm going to tell you, the villages is going to have the same problem because if the sellers think they could negotiate, which they always could negotiate, but then they think they could, they're going to try and negotiate with them. And if they can't negotiate with them, guess where they're going to put their house? They're going to list it in the MLS. So it would be good to see what they're going to do on their side because just because they are not realtors and they don't belong to the National Association of Realtors doesn't mean they are above the law. So they're going to have the same issues that we are going to have. It's just how everybody deals with it. So I think, and I already have these conversations, starting to have these conversations with my sellers. This is the fee that I charge to get your home ready to sell, list it, you know, all the things that we do. You tell me what you would like to pay the buyer's agent. You can pay them nothing. You can pay them, you know, 1%, 2%, 10%. I don't know, a million dollars. You can pay them whatever you want. You just need to let me know what that is. I let them make that decision. I'll do a seller's net sheet for them so they know how much they can expect to pay. But it's really up to them how, how I don't want to say how they want to spend their money because really, if I come to you to list your house and I say, okay, I can do this for 5% or 6% or 2% or 3 whatever it is, you're paying me. In my opinion, what I decide to do with that money doesn't matter. You already said I'm going to give you this money. So I look at it as, all right, I'm going to sell your house and you're going to pay me $1,000 to sell it. 
But now I want to go on vacation. And then you turn around and say, hey, you can't go on vacation with that money. Well, you just told me I could have it. What does it matter? What I do with it? That, that's my brain, how it works with this whole thing. But all right. So there we are with the seller. So now the seller says they're going to offer, offer compensation. Great. Let's say the seller says, no, I don't want to offer compensation. Let the buyer pay. All right. So the buyer and the and someone like myself, we have to sit down and fill out a buyer agency agreement. This is going to be required that we fill this out when we go to show you homes and we say, OK, this is what I'm going to do. We're going to look at single family homes and this is your price range. And this contract is for whatever it is, a month, two months, whatever. And you're going to agree to pay me. And I don't know how the language is going to work. And I'll put a fee in there. And then, fine, so we've signed this. You say you're going to work with me and you're going to pay me, you know, a bowl of Snickers. <laughs> and now I'm going to go call the listing agents. You want to see five, home, five homes. So I go to five homes. I call all of them. Is the seller offering compensation? They, I, I need to know this because I have to tell you, the buyer, when you go with me, if you're going to have to give me Snickers or not. <laughs> and Snickers is money. Um. <laughs> Sorry, okay. So I've been watching The Sopranos. They were calling money boxaziti. But anyway, so the um, if I call the sellers and find out that three homes that we're going to look at that that we've both agreed that these are the homes you like, it could be ten homes, whatever, but just five homes, three are offering compensation to the buyer's agent, two are not. I have to tell you that so you know. You may say to me, "I still want to see those homes." But you may also say, no, I don't. So if you don't want to see the homes, you don't want to see the homes. I may say you may want to take a look at that house because I think it's really nice. Um, but ultimately, it's going to be up to you because in the event that you find a home that the seller is not paying compensation, you have to pay the realtor the compensation for. I mean, we're not there to just open the door and write a contract. You're hiring us for expertise. And I'm going to speak Here's my little commercial here. I know this market inside and out. I know the homes. I might not know the model names because I don't feel like that makes a difference because you never know what people do with the inside of their home. But I know what to expect from size and price and, um, um, you know, the amenities and everything that you need to know to make a good informed buying decision, to make the right buying decision. That's what you're hiring a realtor for. And you want to make sure you have someone good on your side. So um, I hope that cleared up that for some people, if you have that as a question. Uh, do you think prices will go further down in the South? Those bonds are so damn high. Yes, Emilio, they are high. And in Dabney and Lake Denham, the taxes are really high. Um, so the developer builds a product that people want, but obviously the people don't want that down there. Um, Dabney and Lake Denham are really far away from everything and they're going to be for a very long time. Um, if you want to get to when Eastport is built, it takes about five to seven minutes by car going 50 miles an hour on 470 to get to Eastport from Dabney because I've done it. Um, golf cart, you have to go all the way up to Sawgrass, over the Sawgrass Bridge, down Bixley Trail. It's going to take a half an hour. So um, it's very, very far away. I don't know if they can discount them anymore. Maybe they can. I mean, but most of the homes that are left are either on 470, on the turnpike or under the power towers. So that's great if you can get that home for cheap. But seriously, in a year when you call me to sell that house, don't expect to make any money on it. It's going to be difficult for you to sell it because it was difficult for them to sell it. So you bought it cheap. Don't expect to get rid of it that easily. I don't care how bad. Well, I guess if we went through COVID again, maybe people would buy that. But you may have a problem. So just keep that in mind when you're looking down there. All right. Uh, great idea. I have to remember to have Robin sign mine too. Yes, Brenda. I keep Sharpies in my car like a NASCAR driver. <laughs> Um, I'm hiring you to list my house in the next few months. Um, <clears throat> Chief, that was like a question mark. I should have been an exclamation point, don't you think? Are you still on the treadmill and you can't use the phone? Or maybe you need glasses. 
Um, let's see, the village's chief moving further south, moving west chief. They want to know where you're going, yo. Uh, saving that for future episode. Oh, look at that. Hey, we got a sneak peek here. The chief's going to come up with an episode on where he's going. Uh, right, Tina, I had a realtor in Vermont tell me that some states were double dipping in fees. That's why the lawsuit happened. Any truth to that? Okay, so in some states, you there's called a thing called dual agency where you cannot have the buyer and the seller in the same transaction. Florida is not like that. Florida, we are transaction agents, so we can have both sides, buyer and seller. Now, if you hire a listing agent or a buyer or your buyer's agent as a single agent, they represent only you, then you cannot have both sides. So um, that's if if they're getting I don't know how legally they can go both sides if they're in a dual agency state. So I think that might be a little bit incorrect. Um Seems like it's going to get so confusing to buy a house. Now, I think it's just confusing right now, Noreen, because we really don't know the details. Because this is a class action lawsuit, uh, the courts have to approve the plan. They just can't say, okay, settle. This is how it's going to be. So that's why there are a lot of unknowns here. But I could tell you that the local boards and brokers are feverishly working behind the scenes to come up with solutions uh, to make that transition much, make it easier for you to buy a home because we don't want it to be a complicated process. Um, <clears throat> let's see, decided you needed mountains, huh, Chief? Okay, uh, hey, it's Robin, great to finally see you live. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey. You were on the episode where I went over a thousand viewers with Skip. Yes. You guys will help me get monetized. And I've never forgot that. Um, let's see. Okay, good. You're off the treadmill. So now we can expect correct tech of correct messages. <laughs> um, how soundproof are houses? Uh, well, so... Um, I can't hear my neighbors on either side. I live right near the prison. I don't hear that. I don't hear much anyway. But um, <clears throat> yeah, it's, uh, I think where you have a problem, and you know what? I, I never read this letter. A woman, a viewer sent me an email where she had rented a courtyard villa and the neighbor, so they're like a tunnel, you know, and they've got the high walls, but Noise bounces off of that stuff all the time. So I guess she was outside and she could see the neighbor had a camera, but it was coming right into the her, the home that she was renting yard. So <clears throat> I would have to say that's probably not soundproof. Now, if you have kissing the eyes, you're in trouble because you're going to hear everything your neighbor says. That's why like my patio villa, the, the Lanai, see that screen there? Lanai's out front and my neighbors all have a canal in the back. So their lanai's are in the back. So my row is really, really private. And I really like that. Um, let's see. What was on WNL episode that you hit? Oh, gosh. That was that was a long time ago. It was in December. Skip had a song. We were talking about content creators. That was not to, uh, probably three years ago. Um, do you know anything about the new neighborhood south of... Grove, where they're going to start selling lots there. No, I do not know of any neighborhood where they're going to sell lots next. Um, I'll be down in the villages in 10 days to take a look and decision of buying a house there. Very excited. We have to call you before I leave. Yes, you do. Let me know when you're in town. We can at least meet up for a cup of coffee just to say hi, get to know one another. Um, all right, Deb's got a message for the chief. And all right, so I had a couple, let's see. Oh, remember when you are looking at homes, whether you're looking MLS or VLS, make sure you know the new tax rate. Have your realtor or VLS associate calculate the new taxes based on the sale price of your home so you know what your new taxes will be. 
always know what the bond is, always know what the CDD is. Do not take for granted um, that maybe the information is correct. Also, uh, we just had this instance and I just found this out that um, we had a, I had a buyer who was purchasing a home and they had an open permit. And the listing agent and I, she did a lot of work. I made a couple phone calls. She did most of it, I have to tell you. But we found out that the title company that did the title work did not do a lien search for open permits. And the people bought it from the previous owner who put the enclosure and the slab in. Now there's an open permit and it caused a lot of problem. My buyer had to back out of the deal. But um, I'm making sure that every deal I do, I when, when it's a listing, I use Magnolia Closing and I know they do a lien search and they do on open permits. You just make sure... Um, ask your realtor to make sure the title company that they choose does a lien search because you don't want to get into a process. This is more so for the seller that you have an open permit. And um, well, actually it's for the buyer too. You want to make sure that you're not making a not well, you won't know this till later, but you want to make sure that you know are there are any open permits because that could be very problematic for you. You need a second lifestyle visit. Uh, yeah, maybe you do, you know, you don't have to do a lifestyle visit because now I know they're booking into June and, and look right now it's probably hard to get a, a, a rental here in the villages, but you always can rent a home or stay in a hotel and call me or call, you know, if it's your, whatever agent realtor you're working with or VLS and just let them know you're in town and you want to sh get shown around, show some homes. You don't have to have the lifestyle visit because I'm going to tell you something, they're shoving you way down South <laughs> in what I call Orlando, otherwise known as Dabney and Lake Denham. And I think it's almost at the Disney gate. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, but they, um, They'll give you tickets to, you know, some tribute band or, you know, maybe book a tea time or a lesson. Those aren't things that, I mean, you they're nice to have, but, you know, you could do that while you're here. Um, you really want to spend your time on a lifestyle exploring the neighborhoods. I can't stress this enough. You want to drive through all the neighborhoods to see what they're like. And then you'll have an idea. I like this section. I don't like that section. I don't like these homes over here. I don't like a patio villa. I like a courtyard villa. I want a bigger courtyard villa. And where are those? So by exploring the neighborhoods, you're really going to get a better feel for where you need to be. So you don't always necessarily have to have that lifestyle visit to do it. But definitely make sure, go to open houses if you're on your first time and you're not really sure. Check out the stores, check out the restaurants, the town squares, but really spend time driving through the neighborhoods. That's the best advice I could give you. Um, is there anything in writing that can hold the seller responsible? The house is found to be out of compliance after the sale is complete. Well, it's, it's sometimes it might not be the seller, you know, like in this instance, it wasn't the seller's fault. They bought a house and they got clear title. The title company who did their title work didn't do a lien search. Now, consequently, they can't sell their home. So um, let's see. Can you check on your own with the town? for? Uh, yeah, you could call the county and see if there are any open permits. Sure. Uh, what's a CDD? So we are not a homeowners association. We are community development district. So you, um, there's no governing body, but we do have, I think it's 15 districts now. Um, the CDD fee pays to maintain all the common areas because, you know, in a typical homeowners association, They'll pay to maintain the common areas. And then, you know, a lot of them will have cable and trash and, you know, maybe lawn care. But we don't have that here. You maintain everything when it comes to your home. The CDD pays to maintain the common areas, mowing around the retention ponds, the flower change every, whatever, 20 minutes, those things. It pays to maintain your district and keep it looking good. 
that fee never goes away. The county maintains the roads. The roads are all public. Just so you know that if you're ever here, all you have to do is go through the gate and push the button. No one's going to stop you. We're a community filled with gates, but we're not gated. There's a big difference. Like If you go to the plantation or Arlington Ridge, a lot of those, you have to show ID. You have to. I have to show my real estate license to get in. You just can't drive through there, but we're not like that. Um, is there, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, just to rental, plenty of them open. Yes, I agree with you. Uh, but I can stay a week at a time. Yes. Um, lifestyles are between four and seven days. So you rent a house. You can stay as long as you want. Still watching the villages from Minnesota. I have a lifestyle visit. Looking forward to renting for a month or so. Cool, MJ. Uh, let's see. I was at Alden Bungalows back in July. I have two. I had two homes for sale over there. Hopefully they're rented. We're going to get those back on the market in a couple months. Um, are they pushing the new homes in the lifestyle? Seems so. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're always pushing the new homes. So, um, you know, it's just the way it is. Uh, but if you are, you know, it, it would behoove you to look at the new homes just so you know what's out there. Hey, they have some cool looking models. You know, they've changed them up a little bit, the exteriors. So, and I think Middleton has some nice looking models. I wish they would put some of those over here. But you should look at new and you should look at pre-owned and make the decision for yourself. Don't let anyone ever pressure you. Um, it was very good. Very nice third bedroom courtyard. Yep. Right across the street from Brownwood. Yes. Yep. Those, those were the lifestyle. Well, they started lifestyles. Well, I'm sure they probably had them up in Spanish Springs and they had them at Sumter Landing. Then they had them at Alden and Atwood. And now they're putting them in Christopher Villas and then down South. Um, Let's see what else we got. Why are the newer homes cheaper than the uh, used home? Okay, that is a great question, and I get it all the time. So the new homes, if you're not building, you know, purchasing a lot and building, are probably very, they're very basic. Basic landscaping, no closet organizers. Some of them don't have shower doors. They might have cheap appliances, you know, inexpensive flooring, formica, Pre-owned homes, they get tricked out. You know, the second people buy homes, the next thing you know, you see the contractors rolling in. They'll have upgraded landscaping. They'll have closet organizers. Uh, they'll change out the countertops, the sinks, the faucets, the appliances. So there's value in that. And the new homes don't have it. The pre-owned homes do. Now, maybe not all pre-owned homes, but that's why... They're so less expensive because you're still going to walk in and dump money. And let me tell you something. It's easy to dump 30 into these houses. And you're like, what I do? How did $30,000 go? So just keep that in mind when you're, when you're looking at the new home. Don't get seduced by that really cheap price because it's really cheap for a reason. Because the Villages is building a product everybody wants. They don't have to give it away. If they're giving it away, there's a reason they're giving it away. So... Um, I, I was just at a house the other day, you know, that corn, that pine straw they put down is such crap. I had that out at my house. Now they, I have, you know, different landscaping material, but that stuff like washes away when it rains. It's crazy. Um, so, uh, oh, and also the, um, the bonds, the new, no matter where you are new, the bonds are higher. Um, the taxes in, um, that Eastport, Moultrie Creek area are still Sumter, Wildwood, Newell, Dabney, and Denham are Lake County. So the taxes are really expensive out there. And I'll tell you this. I just did a comparison. I have a buyer looking at a home that's um, in the high nines. And then they were looking at two homes that were, um, and I'm sorry if you're seeing a commercial. Sometimes they just click up. That's YouTube. Uh, but anyway, so they have a, um, and they were looking, they showed me two homes that actually had been in Pine Ridge and that's Lake Fruitland Park. So the Sumter County, $975,000 house, the taxes are going to be about 9,000. The one in Lake County, they're going to be 12 and 14 or 15,000, just the taxes. So, you know, you need to think about all of those things when you're looking. Uh, how far is Dabney and Lake Denham from Disney? I don't think it's too far. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I, sometimes I, I exaggerate quite a bit, 
But um, it, I say it's it's at the gate at Disney because it's so far away from everything. Um, actually, south of 44, we're for a little over an hour to Disney. We're 50 minutes from Orlando Airport. Uh, I hope you decide to stay. I really enjoy watching it. Okay. That's for Chief. Good question, I guess. Yeah. Let's see. Sola Vida would be closer to Disney. You know, I don't know. I have a lot of friends who live in Sola Vida. Um, I played in a couple tournaments with, and some of my partners lived it, lived down in Sola Vida. Nice community. Um, but I still think they're an hour from Disney because I know uh, my one, my mixed doubles partner, he and, he and his wife belonged, um, you know, they, they would go like all the time. They had annual passes. And I remember Greg telling me it still took him an hour because a lot of traffic down there. Um, some of the homes are forty to $50,000 more after just a couple of years with no upgrades. That's, uh, oh, are you talking about, yeah, that could be for a pre-owned home. I don't know. It's all case by case basis. You know, the housing market's a commodity. Sometimes people list their house and they're out to lunch with the price and, and then they actually have end up having to bring it down. How often do you get pre-owned veranda homes? Uh, because they're primarily south of 44, occasionally I see them. So uh, we just have to keep a lookout for that. If that's what you're interested in, Stefan, I, um, call me or email me your information and I'll make sure. Don't forget, you got to search my website here. I'm going to put that up here again. And because it'll send, when you register, you can, um, there is my website. Um, you can search the different sections. You can sign up to get open house uh, alerts, market alerts. When you register and you put your parameters in, it'll send you new homes. That come on the market? No, new to the MLS. I mean, new when new homes hit the market. If there's a price reduction, and also I know I get a lot of questions about this. So when you're on my website, when you first log in, it's going to ask you to sign in. If the screen pops up and it keeps asking you to sign in, you have to check your cookies. They've told me in the support department that if you don't accept cookies, that could be a problem. And it's not like I'm giving you Oreos. <laughs> You're looking on my website, but you know, it'll, it'll, there's a little pop up there. It'll say, accept cookies. So accept the cookies and then just look at the bottom and it may say sign in and you have to put your email address. The whole thing is I want your information so I can keep track of what you're doing and be able to help you better. That's the whole thing. I want to be able to help you fine tune your home search. Uh, do you ever have a bidding war on a house? And we had multiple times here. We were getting multiple offers and they're just increasing. I, uh, yeah, I just had two homes I sold. I had both buyers and the, um, oops, I got to get my cord. Hold on. All right. You know, when you don't have staff and you're a one man show, things can be problematic. So let's plug this in. Hopefully I got it. All right, I'm back. <laughs> My computer's going dead. Okay. There we go. All right. So um, I just had, well, one was my listing and I had the buyer and it was on the, it had been on the market for a really long time. And then finally I got the listing. Um, we put it on the market, back on the market. And uh, I had two offers. One was my buyer. One was another buyer on the same day. I couldn't believe it. And that went actually over what the current asking price was. And then I had another home that, that had been on the market, I think 23 days. It was 800 and it was listed at $875,000. And we, was it eight? No, it was eight, seven. Yeah, whatever. It was 875. We made an offer. And then the next thing you know, they got three offers. So it went into a little bit of bidding war. We won, but that's a prime example. This just happened like a week and a half ago. Um, well, they closed a week and a half ago. This happened probably about a month ago. And then I've had homes that go under asking price. So it's all, it all depends on the house. Does your website allow me to search for verandas? No. Um, the MLS, you can't search a specific style of home. You have to look at the price. And listen, all I can tell you is, you know, the veranda homes are probably 450, 425 and above. So, um, and they're really south of 44. So that'll narrow your search. If you just put that criteria in, 
it'll send you homes. And if you don't see a veranda home, you know, just ignore it. But sometimes you might find a designer home that has a wall behind it and you can make it private with landscaping. So just keep that in mind. If you need a home that's walled in, maybe you want to find a home that has a wall behind it and get creative with how you enclose it. Uh, will your new site allow you to select more than one type of home you're searching for? Or do you do different styles of home at one time? No. Um, and the M because my website is a feed from the MLS. So if the home's on the MLS, you'll be able to search it. Um, and you can search for size, you know, square footage, price, how many minimum bedrooms, minimum bathrooms, um, you know, if you want, you know, there's all different parameters that you can enter in. And I, <clears throat> When you sign up to search my site, within a few days, Ryan, my assistant, should give you a phone call to ask a couple questions. And you'll start to get emails and text messages from me asking questions, sending out information. If your information is not fine-tuned, you're going to get all kinds of emails. I have people call me, I'm getting 10 emails from you. It's like, because you have 10 safe searches. <laughs> so you're getting 10 emails from me. So then I go in and I delete everything and I neaten it all up for everyone and everything is good. But if you're having a problem with searching my site, just send me an email and tell me what the problem is so I can go through or he can go through and we can fix it for you. Uh, are you seeing insurance rates increase in the villages? Insurance rates increase no matter where you are. Um, I did see on TV that they were talking about citizens and worrying about, you know, somebody was saying they're worried about they're not going to have enough money if there was a major storm. Insurance companies have money. So, uh, and I sold commercial insurance for a very long time. So um, you got to remember if insurance company is collecting a dollar in premium, they probably have three by law. They have to have three to five dollars backing that up in reinsurance. So insurance companies have money, but the, uh, <laughs> um, anyway, the, uh, let's see, I'm laughing at one of the comments here. Uh, insurance rates are going to go up. If you have an old roof, it's going to cost money. And what really is bad about insurance. And this is just, is just the industry, the way it is. The, an insurance claim will follow you and the home. So if you had a claim in your home in Alaska and you moved down here to buy a house, they're going to say, hey, you had an insurance claim. Ding. Now, if you had a claim in that home in Alaska and you bought a house in Florida and that had that house had a claim, double ding. So like you live in Alaska could really do anything about the home here in Florida, but that's just the way it works. So and that comes out when you go to get an insurance quote. But in the um, in the seller's disclosure, we the seller, if they know about a claim, they have to indicate they know there's been an insurance claim and describe it. Now, sometimes they may not know, especially in a lot of cases where the kids are taking over the home because the parents have passed. They don't really know or they may know, but they don't know all the details. So everything is we don't know. We didn't live here. And so those things will eventually come out. Uh, I'm 53 and a half and can't buy until 55. When should I start contacting you? You can contact me now because you can buy a house now. You just can't have 19 year olds living with you or younger. But if you're buying it as investment property, like my son, he's 32. He could buy a house here. Um, <laughs> thank you, Brenda. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I don't like to talk about my personal life too much. Uh, I do share personal, but that part of personal, I like to keep very private if you don't mind. Um, what you're feeling about crowds in Eastport Town Square with all the families near Middleton and uh, Tina driving yeah, the golf car. Hey, Denny, how you doing? Are you coming here or what, girlfriend? Um, I think it'll be interesting. That's the best thing I can say. We really don't know what's going to happen, but it could be a lot of kids in the area. I uh, have to wait a few years before I can get pre-qualified. Okay. Let's see. All right. Did you sell your house in Alabama though, Denny? That's what I need to know. <laughs> uh, all right. Listen, have I, how long have I been babbling? Oh my God. I've been running for an hour. 
All right. Um, any last questions? Because I think I'm going to cut it short because um, I talk all day long and sometimes I get tired of hearing myself. <laughs> Actually, I used to say I talk to myself because I'm the only one that listens to me. And that was when I had kids in the house and actually when I had my restaurant. <laughs> um, thank you very much. Oh, here, let's just talk about real quick lifestyle, okay? If you play pickleball, this is a place to live. I'm telling you, pickleball and golf, you can't beat it. Come on down here, start enjoying your life. Have fun, enjoy yourself. This is a great place to be. Don't wait too long to start a new life. I'm telling you right now. All right. So I am going to close it out here. Everyone, thank you so much for joining me. I'm Robin Cavallaro. I'm a licensed realtor here in the state of Florida. I primarily sell in the villages. If you want to buy or sell, you know who to call. I'm your girl. All right, everyone. Until next time, I'll see you. Going to hit end stream now. <laughs>